In the year 2012, a script would be leaked online titled The Blue Door, with some familiar characters present. This was a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, but they were aliens? Two years later, we got a revival of the live-action TMNT movies. Why did I mention the Blue Door? I thought it was funny that they wanted to make them aliens. Anyway, 2014's Ninja Turtles movie is a very divisive movie, bringing the turtles back to the big screen once again. Critics absolutely hated this movie, but I remember liking this one and its sequel, so I wanted to look back on this movie with fresh eyes and see how it stacks up. Let's introduce ourselves to this version of the characters. Leo is the leader of the group, who has some trouble keeping everyone in check. I think out of all the turtles, Leo has the least amount of personality, but that doesn't detract from the film, which is a little disappointing as he's probably the main turtle. I can't say he does or says anything that would separate him from the rest of his brothers. Donatello is the tech whiz, and is a fun character to watch. He looks distinctly different thanks to the tech on his shell, his slimmer build, and his glasses which play up his nerdy side. This allows him to have some funny lines and moments. Raphael surprisingly has the most character development. He's the usual tough guy who is big and scary, but we also explore his more vulnerable side by the end as we see how determined he is to save his brothers when they are taken near the climax. He doesn't see himself worthy of fighting alongside the others, which is why he's so tough on them. This all comes out in the last 10-ish minutes, so it feels a little sloppy. He definitely has the most badass moments in the movie. Michelangelo is horny for April, like a lot. He spends the whole movie making some just really gross remarks, which comes across super creepy. Oh, she's so hot, I can feel my shell tightening. This technically bestiality has been done with Donatello and Leo in other media, and theirs is presented as more cute and charming. But when Mikey does it, it comes off super weird and disgusting. Mikey is the comedy relief, and I wouldn't say a good one. Master Splinter is also here, and he's just as wise and a little bit abusive. <laughs> He's very aggressive in this movie, but he still really cares for the turtles. April O'Neil is definitely here. She pretty much takes on the main character role as we pretty much follow her for the whole runtime, which is disappointing as it's a Ninja Turtles movie. This role does allow Megan Fox to be an actual character instead of having her there just for the male audience to gawk at. April is a reporter who wants to cover bigger stories, but no one is willing to give her the chance. So she's forced to go out on her own to investigate the Foot Clan. And then there's Vern who adds nothing to the plot. He's April's cameraman, who also keeps hitting on her. O'Neal, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, that's good. But less than Mikey. Seriously, if he wasn't in this movie, nothing would be different. I'm shocked that they didn't just put Casey Jones in there to begin with. I have nothing else to say because he doesn't contribute anything. The villains of the movie are a millionaire called Sax and his boss, the Shredder. Neither character are compelling as villains, with their main goal being to get rich. Shredder is pretty intimidating when he's in his armor, but when he's not, he's bold. Now you know the basics of the characters. What does the plot have to offer? Well, it's very bare bones without much substance. Don't get me wrong, this isn't a bad plot, but it's just very unremarkable and very basic. This big businessman, Eric Sachs, wants to unleash a deadly virus onto New York City, so the government will be forced to buy the cure off him, making Sachs even more money. This guy, who is already a very successful and wealthy business tycoon, wants even more money. Boring. So what does this have to do with the turtles, April and Shredder? Well, to make this cure, Sax needs the blood of the turtles because he actually created the mutagen that mutated the turtles alongside April's dad. All right, yeah, makes sense. But what about the Shredder? Sax is actually working for Shredder. So Shredder wants to make lots of money too? I haven't watched a large portion of the TMNT franchise, but this doesn't seem like something Shredder would want. I guess he could want to rule the world using this virus or something, but they're gonna cure it anyway, so... What I'm getting at is that Shredder doesn't have very clear motivations, which in turn makes him less of a character. April is also very interconnected with the plot, as we spend the first 20 minutes following her around on her investigation of the Foot Clan. We get brief glimpses of the turtles, but they are always covered in shadows or stroby lights. I get why they did this, trying to build up a little mystery of who these vigilantes are to newer audiences, but by 2014, the Turtles have become a pop culture icon for decades, so I'd say pretty much everyone already knew who the Turtles were. People went to this movie to watch the Ninja Turtles, but have to watch April and Vern piss fart around for half the runtime. I get April is an integral part of the franchise, but she wasn't used the greatest here. Her investigation wasn't that interesting, and Vern isn't even a character. At least when we finally get to see the Turtles, the movie becomes a lot better. I know a lot of people had problems with the Turtles' designs, 
calling them very gross and unpleasant to look at. Um, isn't that the point? In almost every piece of Turtles media, the Turtles want to go up to the surface, but they can't because they are aware that people would be grossed out by them and shun them. So I think making them look a bit gross really pushes that point across. Plus, they aren't hard to look at. It's a fine line between making them look cool and gross, and they execute it really well. But their asses are not teenagers. They look and sound like full adults. The CGI is so fucking good in this movie, and the action is so fun to watch. My favorite moment in the film is the snowy mountain truck escape near the end. There's a lot of great shots with multiple one takes, and the dialogue is great. They ain't dead, numbnuts. The turtles need to stop this truck with Vern and April in it from going over a cliff, so they need to sled down the mountain on their shells, while also taking out the Foot Clan soldiers. Raph is used as a cannonball. Donnie uses his smarts, and I love how happy he is when he actually pulls something off. <laughs> And then an avalanche occurs, which elevates the action. It's just also great. There are other fights I like as well, like Splinter vs Shredder, which goes very well for Shredder. And also the final confrontation, which also goes really well for Shredder. It's almost comedic how easy Shredder takes out the turtles. Three of the turtles are captured by the Foot Clan, leaving Raph alone with April and Vern. They need the turtles alive to get the mutagen out of their blood. And they didn't take Raph because they thought he died. But couldn't they take him anyway? I'm sure they could just get the mutagen out if they were quick. What about Splinter as well? He also had the same mutagen, and he was at least barely alive. Take him too. Man, Shredder is dumb. Anyway, the virus doesn't get sent out thanks to the turtles, and Shredder is defeated. And the movie ends with Mikey flirting with April. No, seriously. Honestly, I was kind of disappointed looking back on this movie. I still enjoyed some bits, but the very simple plot kind of left me unengaged. It's definitely watchable, but I don't think I'll be watching it again anytime soon. I also wrote some notes about this movie. <clears throat> Skype is never that good. Shredder is bold, haha. <laughs> Fart joke. Their shells are bulletproof? Is that a turtle thing? Or a mutant turtle thing? The big bad Shredder is taken down by April slightly kicking him. Okay. After the box office success of the last movie, a sequel was released two years later. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. I'm glad to say that Out of the Shadows is actually pretty good. Definitely better than the first movie in almost every way. We're introduced to characters from past TMNT media brought into live action like Baxter Stockman, a very charismatic scientist who wants to become super famous. Casey Jones, an ex-cop who helps the turtles throughout the movie and loves hockey. And Krang, an alien brain who wants to take over the world. There's also Bebop and Rocksteady, two mutants who are really fun. All these characters are utilized pretty well, with all of them being welcome additions to the cast. Our usual human characters are here too. April has taken on a more spy-like persona, which allows her to become even more useful. Vern is also still here, but in a reduced role from last time. And I thank you, Turtle Gods. He actually doesn't feel like a nothing character here. He took all the credit for Shredder's defeat so the Turtles can stay hidden, and he becomes a celebrity, using this new status to help April and the gang. The Turtles are now the main focus, with April and the others playing support, and I think this works much better. It's a little unfortunate that it's a take over the world plot, but I think everything that leads up to it makes this basic plot more enjoyable. However, Shredder still doesn't have any personality, and he's the villain we see for most of the runtime. Krang is barely in it, and this would have been bad if not for Bebop and Rocksteady being around. So what happens in the movie? Krang recruits Shredder to assemble a portal to Earth so he can conquer it using his Technodrome. Again, sounds very simple, but all the characters' personalities step up a notch, with there being even more emotion to keep us engaged. This film has Mikey desperately yearning to go up to the surface and to be accepted by the humans, but obviously the turtles understand that people would see them as monsters. Conflict arises when they get their hands on mutagen that could turn them human. All of them react differently to this information, like Mikey obviously wanting to do it, and Leo is very stern about not doing it. I bring all this up because you can really get behind this struggle, as both sides' arguments seem very fair, and there's a lot of logic behind them. Mikey and Raph's desperate desire to be accepted by humans drives them to try and steal more of that ooze, but in turn, are exposed to some humans. They get called monsters, and you can just tell how upset this makes them. Even Leo. Mutant Mayhem handles this topic better, but this movie pulls it off surprisingly well. The turtles are just defined way better the second time around. Leo has a lot more control issues, which leads to him not really understanding the feelings of others. Mikey stops flirting with April, thank God. Raph is just angry as before, but you can understand where he's coming from. 
Donny is still kind of there. Still fun, but he doesn't really do much. They actually start acting more like teenagers instead of the serious brutes from last time. The movie even starts with them sneaking into a basketball game, just having fun. This opening also has a character recap kind of thing, which doesn't really work in the second movie of a duology. Mikey even recaps the team later on to Casey, which is a much better way to familiarize yourself with the characters, instead of this very forced way. There's more great action set pieces, like the highway scene at the start, being jam-packed with stuff. It's our first introduction to Casey, Bebop, and Rocksteady. A lot is set up in this movie and is paid off later. For instance, Bebop and Rocksteady helping Shredder escape, and then they're recruited by him later on, instead of just introducing Bebop and Rocksteady when they're needed. Casey mentions his hockey skills, which again comes back later. I'm really glad that Casey's hockey got a fair bit of spotlight. It's stuff like this which makes the story feel like there's more substance. Another fun moment I like is the police station heist for the Purple Ooze. It starts off so well, but goes to shit so quickly. A chunk of the movie has the turtles jumping out of the plane, to them fighting in the plane, to them fighting on the river, all in about 15 minutes. It's really fun action and has some good character moments. No! Seriously? Yeah, that's my bad. I got a little carried away. Something I didn't like, however, is how easily Shredder's plan went. He's tasked with obtaining these three pieces, and he gets the first two without any problems. The turtles don't even know about it. It's the third one that gives them a bit more trouble, but they end up getting it anyway. This failure was to drive a further wedge between the team, but it just makes the turtles feel incompatible. Anyway, Shredder betrays Stockman, and Krang betrays Shredder. Oh, the irony. The big bad for both movies is taken out in two seconds. This is a really underwhelming defeat, but he didn't really have any personality, so you know what? He can leave. As Krang's Technodrome starts to come to Earth, the Turtles revisit the turning human idea, and Leo actually gives up his pride to give everyone the choice. They all refuse to do it, and sneak on board thanks to the police. They save the day by sending the Technodrome back through the portal, and get some acceptance from a group of humans. It isn't much, but you can tell how much it means to the Turtles. Pretty wholesome ending. Everything wrapped up really nice, and I wonder if we'll see Stockman in the next movie. Oh wait, we didn't get another TMNT movie until seven years later, thanks to the underwhelming box office on this movie. Luckily that next movie is my favorite, so I'll talk about that some other time. There was also a fart joke. Yeah, beeps? Well, I got a big bang for you. <laughs>